Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the third episode of CS Talks, where I, Nipun Chamikara, will be a host for today. On this third iteration of CS Talks, we're going to talk about ICS Square Information Security Certifications, which is an initiative from the IEEE Computer Society of Sri Lanka chapter to raise awareness and encourage fresh graduates and final year undergraduates alike on industry level qualifications, scholarships, and careers in cybersecurity. Today's session is conducted in collaboration with ICS Squared Colombo Chapter Sri Lanka and Women in Cybersecurity of the aforementioned chapter. To give us more information about these certifications, we have our guest speaker for this evening, Mr. Namal Herat. Mr. Namal is currently a manager for information security at Mobitel and a board member of ICS Square Colombo chapter. He got his Bachelor of Science in Management Information Systems from the University of Dublin, Ireland, and a Master's in Business Administration in Information Technology from the University of Malta. As a certified information system security professional, along with his many other qualifications, he's the perfect guest speaker for today's occasion. So, without further ado, over to you, Mr. Nama. Thank you, Nipun. Uh, very good evening to all of my colleagues. So, on behalf of uh, Colombo chapter of IAC Square, we warmly welcome you all to the presentation. So, let me uh, share my presentation. All right. I think. Uh, you all can see the presentation. So this presentation is uh, basically focused on uh, you to give a comprehensive understanding of uh, the IAC uh, squared body and its uh, the certification offerings and member benefits and other uh, types of career deployments that uh, you can uh, obtain uh, once you become a member. So before we uh, uh, you know, uh, start the session, so uh, there will be a uh, special guest uh, is joining with us. He is none other than our existing uh, present uh, chapter president, Sujit Christie. Sujit, welcome uh, uh, to the presentation. Sujit is one of the leading uh, cybersecurity veterans in uh, local and international context. So when it comes to Colombo chapter, I will more elaborate on that. So he will share his uh, vast experience in IAC squad uh, operations and history and you know uh, developments throughout of uh, session, uh, which we think that uh, might be useful to you all. So without uh, uh, any, any uh, uh, description just just uh, we'll move uh, into the presentation so so who is isc squad so what is uh, what are they doing so uh, i believe uh, majority most of them have not very much familiar of isc squad by its name but uh, if someone says the organization that offers CISSP certification, then I believe uh, some of them knows the organization. So what is this organization? What sort of uh, organization uh, is this? So IAC squad is uh, known as International Information Security uh, Certification Consortium, right? This was founded in 1989 as a non-profitable organization. So, a lot of individual groups were involved in formation of this uh, elite uh, body in 1989. For example, Canadian Information Processing Society, uh, the Information Systems Security Association, International Federal of Information Processing. Likewise, individual groups got together and formed this organization 32 years ago. So as you can see, over the last 32 years period, this organization have 
gradually evolve into a situation where today if you see if you speak about certification cyber security certification this organization comes first so it has become one of the most recognizable in, uh, uh, organization in the world so the ultimate objective of formation of this kind of a institution is to provide professional security education as well as to provide security professionals required by the uh, information security industry in the world so now this particular organization has uh, spanned across almost all the continents and more than 106000 members have uh, uh, benefited uh, of their certification uh, keep it in mind this 106000 plus certification holders are below required uh, amount of required uh, security professionals by the industry so keep it in mind so this particular organization has been uh, accredited has been recognized by one of the leading institutes in the world like american national standard institute nist special Def department of defense so we all know that the department of defense is not engaging in general business so if they accept the uh, IEC squad as uh, IEC squad professional as uh, uh, recognizable and uh, listed the certification in their uh, recognizable list, it's it's something special. So they don't do uh, they do serious business. So likewise, this organization throughout of inception up to date has been recognized and a, were able to maintain the status of different organizations. So uh, with the project of formation of individual chapters, a Colombo chapter has been formulated in 2011. So Sujit Christie is one of the leading members who took initiatives to formation of uh, Colombo chapter in 2011. So I invite Sujit to share some of the uh, you know, objectives of local chapter and their programs. Since Sujit Christie is well-known industry security professional in Sri Lanka as well as the global context. So he has been uh, with the uh, IEC, op IEC squad operations from uh, yeah, say more than two decades. So he has a lot of experience to share with us. So I uh, request him to share about Colombo chapter initiatives and their programs. Sujit. Thank you, Nama. Good evening, everybody. And uh, thank you so much for taking time to attend this uh, webinar. And we, we sincerely hope that this will open up new avenues uh, for each and every one of you in terms of career options. Right? So you may be wondering, why did uh, the chapter get formed in 2011? IC squared right from the inception 30 plus years ago, they never had the concept of chapters. So it was only in 2011, they decided to form chapters in every country. Now, I, I take it as a great privilege and honor to have been involved in formation of the Colombo chapter. And we were one of the top, the first 25 chapters to be formed globally. Right, so, so we were one of the first 25 chapters to be formed in Sri Lanka. Our objective was to take the cybersecurity messaging, not just to individuals, but also to the organizations. So if, if you all have time, if you all go back and do some research, uh, when we talk about cybersecurity in the early 2000 or even in the early 2010-11, uh, not many organizations recognized the cybersecurity profession as an important profession or even the certifications. Today in Sri Lanka, lots of large organizations are looking out for IC squared credential holders, right? So now I will talk about the various credentials which we have to offer. More importantly, I want to highlight that the Central Bank of Sri Lanka in its directive has mandated 
that the C chief information security officer or anybody who is going to be in incident management or various other security roles, they should be holding an ISC squared qualification. Okay. And typically when you look at Sri Lanka as a country, we focus more on software development. While well, uh, even right now, when we talk about exports revenue or dollar revenue, the, the Sri Lankan government is also highlighting that we should be generating $5 billion US dollar business in software development. So for us to be able to generate that kind of revenue, we need to be building super solid, secure software for the global markets. Now, in order to achieve that, we need to have people who are competent, who are security certified, to do the best in terms of producing the code. So this is an opportunity for all of you out there to pursue any one of the IC Square credentials. So with that, I just would like to hand the session back over to Namal, and I'll be there to take any questions you may have during the session. Yes. So let's, uh, so let's uh, speak about certifications. Why we thought of uh, speaking about certification at the beginning of the slide? This is the, this is the first uh, you know, stage that you start. This is the first uh, hurdle that you have to jump in order to become ISC's uh, squad certified credential holder. Once you go through the exams, then you will become a member. Then you will benefit it to uh, uh, maintain and be in the light security uh, group in the global. And then you will be benefited by a lot of offerings in the uh, IAC squad community. So basically, uh, uh, IAC squad focuses on six certifications. We'll go deeply uh, uh, in uh, uh, some of the certifications. So SSCP, CISSP, CSSLP, CCSP, CAP, and HCISP. So this CAP is for risk management, uh, HCISP is for health sector, which is not that much of uh, 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 required the certification for this part of uh, the globe. But in US, Canada, definitely you require this qualification. So mainly uh, the above certifications Four certifications, we will go through one by one and see how do you uh, enroll and how do you, at the end of the process, how do you become a credential holder, right? So what is the goal? So what, what you can achieve by uh, becoming a credential holder of ISC squared, right? It recognizes your values because this has become one of the one of the most recognizable and most demanding certification in present information context security concept so once you earn this qualification you recognize in the industry higher above than the others you will see uh, in the later uh, later part of the presentation why is that and you will be able to make next change of your career i should uh, I should say next leap, giant leap of the career once you certified with the IC squared. So we will come to the certifications and how it formulated and what are the uh, practices they adopt to maintain the standards and qual uh, qualities of the presentation. So this is the basic, uh, this is the basic, uh, uh, re basic reason why you uh, choose IC squared credentials or certifications. So uh, let's move into uh, uh, the website. It will really help you to understand. I, I think uh, all of them have uh, uh, accessed this uh, site. This is, uh, since I'm a member, uh, I am under uh, member login, but for non-members, you have a, a sufficient amount of information that you can go through and understand what this site is and what uh, uh, offerings do you have. So under certifications, 
these are the main certifications that IAC squad offered for uh, potential interesting parties. So these uh, exams are uh, targeted, focused into different groups, right? For example, uh, CSSP, right? For example, CSSP. So CSSP certification is focused for I, the IT security administrators. This is more or less a techie uh, person. People who manage, monitor, and involve in uh, operation with daily routine administration operations. So this exam is uh, totally focused on, I should uh, recommend it uh, for the beginners or entry level professions to information security industry, right? So uh, regardless of the certification, IAC squad has defined a different approach to uh, fully fill the certification. Now, uh, I believe most of you all familiar with online exams. What do you do? You find a course material, you study, and you find out some kind of um, questions or practice exams. Then you pay for the exam and you uh, pass the exam. Once you got through the exam, that means you are qualified. So IAC squad approach is totally different than the general online exam uh, approach, right? So regardless of the certification you choose in the IAC squad, it has defined set of uh, stages. So you can't straight away go uh, find a course material and you can't straight away sit for the exams. So I will exam, I will, this, uh, this, this common approach is common to every uh, certification. So before take any certification, there is a prerequisites that you have to fulfill. If you don't have prerequisites, then you have to wait till uh, those are achieved. Then you are eligible for studying and sit for the exams. Once you sit for the exams, then you have to submit your experience and endorsed by a security uh, professional in ISC squad. Then the uh, ISC squad will evaluate and uh, assess your experience. And based on the experience, they will grant you uh, the member status. Once you assign the member status, then you will be benefited uh, throughout of your career. So that is kind of a lengthy process. So we will uh, uh, go through some examples and see what are the steps. So before we move into the uh, uh, common guidelines of uh, procedures, so let's go into the another certification that they offer. So this is for security professionals. These are for security administrators. So uh, for an example, you go to the ISSP site, sorry, uh, ISC squad site, and go to certifications. So you go to the SSSP, right? For example, you want to check what are the eligible criteria. So under this cat, uh, section, you have all the information sufficient you to decide whether you are eligible for particular exam, particular certification for CSSP, right? So for CSSP, so for every exam, they have uh, defined pathway to certification. This enables you to track whether you are belongs to a target audience or not, and how do you approach and what methods you have to uh, go through to fully fill the certifications. So for example, say SSCP certification, this is for network security engineers, system administrators, systems engineers, so basically, these are focused on security operation engineers, meaning that these are focused uh, uh, on professionals, which is uh, below managerial uh, working, below managerial capacity. Those are the people who are involving in uh, cybersecurity operations. So I told that uh, uh, ISC squad has been uh, recognized by leading uh, one of the one of the leading institute throughout of the world. So here is an example. Now, 
you can see you can uh, go to department of defense criteria to see uh, the status and uh, uh, how they position our certifications uh, in their list so we'll go and uh, quickly have uh, 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 validate how they elevated us in their criteria so this is uh, department of De uh, defense directive 85701 uh, keep it in mind these are continuously you know evolving so the standards may change maybe next year they have defined so it's great a challenge to maintain the standards and be in the industry for more than 30 years 32 years so that is the greatest challenge we have uh, overcome so when you go for uh, dod directives see they have listed our exams on top of every category this is for cissp this is for scp this is sscp these are isc squared certifications and these are isc so uh, so they have kept our certification as top in their list meaning that if you are a credential holder so you you earn to serve in any part of the security uh, industry any part of the globe so let's move into other uh, certifications so i will uh, discuss uh, cis yeah, Mal, yeah. Mal, i just want to come in there right? yeah, sure. can, can you just go back to the uh, the browser please so so uh, i just want to clarify one uh, statement which uh, namal made right uh, you do not have a prerequisite for you to start reading and appearing for the exam the prerequisite Namal is talking about is to use the title after your name. So just imagine if somebody wants to be a doctor. So they would go study the, the, you know, the science, the medical science, four years, and then they would also do one or two years of house surgeon. So only then they are eligible to use the title MBBS. So likewise, these certifications which Namal is presenting to you, you can pursue them while you do your current degree program. So parallelly, you can study for these exams, sit for the exams. Let me tell you what is the advantage you have. If you decide to complete your degree program and then study for these exams, so let's say if you're going to pass out in 2025, and you decide to do any one of these industry certifications in 25, 2025, your post-qualification experience will commence after passing the exam. So which means if the certification says that you need to have two years of job experience, you can only start using the title in 2027. That is one aspect you need to be uh, aware of. Second thing, when you go for an interview, when all of us are very, very keen to find a job, the day you finish your graduation, you want to land a job. Now the advantage, if your interests are in software development and if you pursue uh, IC squared, uh, certification which helps you to develop secure code or if your interests are in networking and communication and you decide to pursue a SSEP or if you want to be a general consultant which you probably would be looking at as a SSP then mm -hmm. when you go for the interview and you say hey I have a degree from my university where I have a BSc in engineering plus SSEP or plus CSSLP, or plus CISSP. What does that mean for a person like me or Namal who is interviewing you? For us, it means that you understand the basics. You understand theory. You understand the best practices defined by the global professional bodies. One of them being the Department of Defense. And Namal also spoke to you about ANSI. Right, the, the certification, the body which actually certifies these exams. 
So, so when you go to a doctor, when you say you have a cold or fever, when you go to the doctor, what gives you the confidence? The confidence is that he has an MBBS title after his name. And for me and for people like Namal, who are actually going to be hiring professionals like you, it gives us a lot of confidence to know, yes, this person is qualified. He understands the best practices. We can hire him. He can get started just like this day one. Namal will also talk to you about the opportunities which are out there in the market, the, the salary skills available in the market, right? So I'm just going to hand the session back over to Namal. Namal, over to you. Right. So uh, we'll keep CISSP uh, at a later part since this is, uh, you should talk more about this certification. Uh, the other certification, Certified Cloud Secret Professionals. These are ideal exams for cloud security technicians. So if you go, if you go through the, so if you go through the uh, website, you will find out the target audience. The beauty of these certifications is that every time, if you uh, if you feel that uh, uh, you need any clarifications to uh, check whether you are in the correct track, you can go to site. So these certifications, uh, cloud security certifications, are meant for cloud security professionals, right? The target audience is engineering people, right? Those are not managerial. These uh, people skills will be evaluated during the examination. So it's more or less engineering task. Similarly, if you, if you are a software engineer, there's a certification for that. These are for uh, CSSLP, Certified Security Software Lifecycle Professional, is for defined for uh, persons in the software industry, software architectures, software engineers, software developers. So now you see that uh, uh, all the uh, three mentioning uh, certifications are aligned to uh, engineering uh, oriented employees meaning that you are if you are a, a systems administrator if you are a security engineer if you are a cloud security engineer or if you are a, in a in a, a software development domain those are ideal for uh, engineers but there is a specific uh, security certification that is uh, defined under CISSP. This is for leaders. So think about, they have considered about uh, security engineers and they also considered about security leaders. So why is that? Now, if you work under uh, any organization, you will realize that For single aspect, engineers see it in a different point of view and uh, managers see it in a different dimension. So engineers dimension is useful to carry out daily operations, but managers or security leaders uh, views on same requirement helps them to uh, align with their security strategies. For example, let's, uh, let's suppose say, so let's uh, say in that uh, organization decide to replace uh, their existing firewall. So what would be the discussion among the technical people? They bother about the throughput, right? What type of interfaces, whether it's a fiber, 10G, 1G or copper, whether URL filtering is there, whether threat profiling is there. So that is perfectly already there and perfectly okay in order to maintain and operate the product. But same uh, requirement, management look at in different uh, dimension. So by replacing firewall, uh, does it improve our business continuity? Does it reduce our uh, threat landscape? 
does it help us to uh, position the security technologies uh, in the defined strategies? So they will look at in the different uh, dimensions. So same requirement, many dimensions. So this leadership skills are very much essential when you go top of the ladder. So that's why IAC squad has defined a specific certification for security leaders. To be honestly, this is targeted managerial and above people who are in the managerial and above level of uh, operations. Uh, for an example, this certification is focused, uh, this certification is focused to Chief Information Security Officers, Chief Information Officers, Directors, Security Managers. So what it means that by, by uh, obtaining these credentials, you will be in a position to see a security operations uh, in a holistic view, not in a macro way, right? So, the very much phrase uh, among the uh, uh, lecturing community of CISSP is that this certification is one inch depth and one mile long, meaning that you need to know all of the domains, right? If you go through the certification, it has you know risk management, it has communication and network security, it has identity access, it has software development. It has secret of operations, meaning that you have to know all the applicable domains in order to take a business decision when you go top of the ladder. So that's why the industry is saying that this is a mile length exam, right? Mile length uh, uh, certification. And you need only very few technology knowledge. That's why they used to call, you have to have inch depth technical knowledge, basic concept, how does it operate, architecture, right? So when it comes to managerial portions, you tend to see a problem in macro picture, not in a micro picture. So for my, my macro picture, uh, very less technical knowledge and vast managerial domain uh, knowledge is sufficient. So this part, that's why this, particular exam is uh, categorized as one of the top leading certifications in the industry. So, so, so uh, when you go to prerequisites, so at least you should have five years experience in either one of the domains. So why is that? Now you may think that you have seen a lot of, lot of, uh, you know, other alternative online certifications. Why different from IAC squad certification? Because IAC tries to maintain their standards. It's totally different. You cannot study the book. You cannot uh, uh, follow the practice test and, the test and do the exam. That is not possible. So in order to take IAC squad exams, especially for example, since I'm a CSSP credential holder, I will more talk about CISSP exam so you can apply it for the other certification as well. You need to change your thinking pattern completely, right? So for example, CISSP exam, it is required you to think as a manager because all the course materials, uh, you know, domains, whatever the uh, focus in groups are focused beyond above the manager portion. So in the questions, the scenarios, uh, which comes to the exam are uh, in a real world scenarios. So in order to be a CISSP professional, you have to be uh, in a security operations team and you have to follow up what your superiors are doing, what their practices are, how do they resolve the problems? How do they, uh, you know, approach a, uh, 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 how do they approach a, a kind of a uh, uh, 
question in different dimensions. So it's all about managerial aspect. So you can't, uh, you can uh, straight away go and sit for the exam. So for each of the exams, you need dedication. Uh, I, I should not say this is very, uh, these exams are very difficult to go through, but it's very challenging. So you need proper planning, proper dedication and commitment. So, and uh, the obtaining the certification uh, is much, dif much different than uh, the other online certification. It has to follow structured process. Why ISC Squad defines such a uh, uh, lengthy process is that they want to maintain their standard size. Why this board, these certifications has been, you know, recognized by one of the top uh, bodies in the world. So they committed to keep the standards. So we'll uh, we'll uh, discuss uh, how does this uh, questions. Uh, are formulated and what type of uh, preparation that required you to be a member. So now uh, you, you are in the middle of the exam track. So you know that you have to have uh, some prerequisites. You have to be uh, eligible for a seat for the exams. And what happened if you go through the exam, say if you pass the exams, so compare with the general online certifications that you completed, once the moment you complete it, then thereafter, you will become an active member. You can say you are a credential holder. So if I share my experience, when I got through my CISCB certification, it mentioned you are provisionally passed the CISCB certification. So I was wondering why this they have included provisionally passed. Then I got to know that there is another leap or there's another a stage to pass that is like Sujit mentioned you have to submit your uh, prerequisites to the evaluation of ISC squared map so you have to provide all the experience all the professional uh, you know projects you have been uh, involved simply you have to prove them that say Look here, I got the exam done, and here are my uh, references, here are my ex uh, experiences, projects pertaining to whatever the domains you are required. Is it sufficient? No, that is not sufficient. Your submission has to endorse. So Sujit Christie will explain this process, why you require this type of a lengthy process, right? And it has to be endorsed by one of the credential holders. So for my experience, I drafted uh, entire my uh, qualifications, experience, and whatever the information they ask pertaining into the domains. And I submitted to one of the credential holders, they endorse. What it means is they say, okay, this is authentic. This person uh, has got through the exam and I know this person personally. So all the facts he presented are aligning with the requirements. Then what will happen, ISC squad will take a few days, maybe 10 working days to evaluate whether and they verify whether you are entitled to use membership. So if you are mem entitled to use membership, they will offer you the membership. Or if, if, if they feel that you need some sort of uh, uh, adjustment or be in the queue to fulfill few of the requirements, they will provide you the uh, alternative path to be a member. So Sujit Christie will, uh, you know, he since he's a veteran member, because uh, uh, he is one of the pioneer members to introduce CISSP certifications to Sri Lanka. And apart from that, uh, uh, he has been given responsibility to conduct CISSP and other uh, IAC squad certification before ISC squad introduced this online track. So he has vast majority of experience to share about the evaluation of uh, exams, how they're structured, uh, structured, how their processes are organized. So Sujit so will uh, uh, definitely share his experience throughout of uh, the last two decades, how these certification pro uh, uh, 
process evolved. So now you understand it's not straightforward to achieve a certification. You have to pass several milestones, right? You know the reason why basically to maintain the standards and the quality of the uh, quality of the exam. So there are different uh, uh, learning options. So if you choose a particular certification track, if you feel that it is suits for you, IC squad uh, define different learning options. But again, Sujit, uh, I think uh, most of the defined education options are not practical to this part of the world. So since I was engaged in uh, one of the uh, 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 boot camps conducted by Colombo chapter and got the knowledge before I sit for the exam. So, uh, Sujit, now uh, I want you to share your, your experience on how this, uh, why these exams has lengthy process, lengthy hurdles to follow up uh, 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 till you get the membership and uh, uh, how these members, our IEEE members, uh, engage in these training uh, sessions because Anyway, you need training, but these mentioned trainings are sometimes not practical in the uh, regions. Shudit, uh, can you share on this, uh, your, your thoughts on this? Yes, yes, Nama. Very, very valid question. And I think it is relevant for all the members to know what is the way they could actually approach this exam, right? So, so I just want to give you confidence. This exam is uh, easy to... When I say easy, if you study, it definitely is easy to clear this exam, right? So, so there is nothing called you cannot conquer. You can conquer this, but it has to take, go. You know, you need to have a structured way of doing it. Uh, in my experience, and which I usually tell all my peers and my friends, is that you need to get a hold of the textbook, right? So that textbook, uh, you can uh, order it from the IC squared website. So it will take you to an Amazon site so you can actually get the textbook. You need to read. Now, if, if you are studying uh, engineering and if you have a subject on software development, you would, when you look at the content which is presented to you from IC squared, you would also see that most of the content which you are currently studying is already covered in the IC squared credentials or the uh, subject for which you need to study for. So more or less, it is a parallel activity you will do. As Namal highlighted, it is all about the way you think. Right? We, we need to be thinking differently. When I say think differently, we, we need to think uh, from the perspective of a security practitioner. That's where we're talking about you need to know the best practices. When Namal spoke about uh, it's an inch deep, while, while you may think, okay, it's just an inch, but it is not so, right? So what I mean is you need to definitely understand what that inch is all about, the best practices. So today, for example, if I were to say you need to use a AAA server, right? So AAA could mean authenticate, authorize, and audit. So we, when we implement a computer system, we would use these terms. But when you read for the IC squared credentials, you would understand as to why this particular technology has to be deployed. Why do you need to authenticate? Why do you need to authorize? And why do you need to audit a system? So, you, you can actually subscribe for an online training program. Of course, it can be slightly expensive, but from a chapter's perspective, we have study groups through which we can help you to study for these exams. So, so the study group is to give you that industry perspective, industry experience, bring in professionals from the industry to help you understand why certain things are being discussed in the book, the way it is discussed and why do people misunderstand some of those statements. So, so we will probably be able to give you that perspective, help you understand better and approach the exam in a much more constructive manner. 
right? And uh, I'm also going to, in a sense of time, I'm just going to quickly run through the exams. Depending on the type of exams, it's all going to be multiple choice. So you got to know all the answers because it's a multiple choice. You've got to choose the best answer. It's an online exam. When you finish the exam, when you walk out, you would have the results. The, the, the examiner at Pearson would either congratulate you or he might he or she might say, see you in another three months time, right? So, so in my experience, my friends have all cleared the exams, including Nama in the first attempt, right? It is possible to clear. The investment you need is your time and uh, dedication. These are the two things which are key ingredients for the exam. So Nawal has uh, put up the slide here. Most of the exams are three hour long and some exams have, I think most of the exams have 125 questions, multiple choice, it's adaptive questions and except for CISSP which has 100 to 150. So maximum is 150 questions I know a friend of mine who had to face all the 150 questions and he, he cleared the exam. But some have you know, answered anything between 70 to 100 and they actually clear the exams. So, so it's an exam which you, if you focus, if you approach it correctly, you can clear it, clear it in the first attempt. Now, can we just quickly go into the next slide in a sense yes. of time? Um. So Sujit, uh, do just briefly explain uh, the endorsement, yeah. and I want to uh, I want to uh, highlight from you that uh, what it is CPE. Now uh, all the certifications required CPEs to maintain. So yeah. if you go through certifications, those are CPE. Just just uh, for the time being, consider it as a credits. Correct. Why this CPE is defined by IEC squared? One is now uh, we tend to interview people. Uh, and we know that uh, they have passed a lot of uh, online certifications, but when we assign a work, uh, they couldn't uh, complete. Why? They complete one certification, forget about it, and go into the another certification. So uh, IEC squad doesn't want to happen uh, to their credential holders. They want, so if you, uh, when you earn the certification, then you have to maintain the certification. So you have to, uh, this uh, scoring system is defined for maintaining a certification. So, Sujit, so I want to uh, briefly explain the endorsement process and highlight what this CP is. Then I will brief the member benefits. Yeah, so, so the continuous professional education is for you to keep up with the current trend. So how do you keep up with the current trend? You can attend webinars, you can read a book or mm -hmm. attend a training program. Because you, all of us have to remember that when we do the exams, it is done in a particular time. Now, I, I mean, when I did the exams, it was way back in 2004, five, that period. The technology at that point in time, we were not even talking about 3G, probably it was like being whispered. Today we are talking about 5G, it has evolved. So for me to be current and relevant to the industry, relevant to the organizations, relevant to my peers, the only way I could stay relevant is acquiring this knowledge by attending various training programs. So IC Squared requires at least 40 hours of training every year. And this is a three year cycle. So 120 hours of training is what you need to attend. You need to show them proof that you attended these programs. And one of the objectives of the Sri Lanka chapter, the Kalamba chapter is to provide you opportunities to attend those webinars or trainings, which you can use to prove your continuous professional education. In most cases, we try to do that free, where in some cases, certain training programs, we may have to charge a nominal fee just to cover the cost. But till to date, almost all the webinars we've done, we have offered everything free of cost to all our members. Right, so, so on an average, we try and do about 20 to 30 hours. We are trying to achieve our training program going forward. Nama? Yes, uh, quickly go through member benefits. So once you become a member, a member I should say uh, IAC Squared is just like a university, right? So uh, quickly go through what benefits uh, you offer, right? We'll have it. 
So most of the uh, benefits are free of charge for uh, credential holders. So for example, uh, for CP, uh, let me let me uh, quickly uh, show you uh, uh, the CP overview. And right, so this is the uh, CP uh, portal. CP uh, means continual continuous professional education. So you need the CP points to two aspects. One need to, one is to maintain your professional levels, right? Maintain your competencies, and other one is to uh, earn. This moment. So other one is to other one is to uh, 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 be in the correct track. So if you go to uh, different uh, uh, benefits, right? Like Sujit Thakpesti says, you have webinars. So you have research papers. You have uh, 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 you have uh, 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 training sessions. You have courses to attend. So all of these. Uh, just a moment. Right, so what benefits you uh, get under a member? So this is my uh, CP for portal. So I have completed my three years uh, CP uh, uh, first circle and started the second uh, portal, second uh, second uh, uh, circle. So now, as uh, Christy mentioned, there are certain ways of uh, uh, claiming your uh, CPs. So one is to webinars. So we'll go quickly go through webinars, what webinars you have, you will understand how useful are they, especially in the pandemic situation. These webinars are very much useful uh, to enhance your knowledge, right? And apart from that, they have courses. See, for an example, these, most of the courses are free to you, right? For an example, sorry. right now, uh, most courses are free to you. So, right. And uh, let's let's uh, move into uh, another benefits. You have a, a research uh, documents to refer. These are you know continuously added to the uh, portal, and these are benefited by uh, most of the uh, security professions. Like see, for example, 2021 cybersecurity uh, workforce study. So ransomware report. So these are these reports. This, this helps you to continuously improve and be intact with the industry. And uh, if you go to uh, webinars, again, I will try to somehow, uh, yes, I'll... right, see, this is the webinars. So uh, when you go to webinars now, see, this, this is, uh, now these are upcoming webinars. You can, you various vendors, various principals, uh, they present their, uh, Differ, uh, based on different topics, they present their uh, uh, presentations. So one aspect is to keep in touch with uh, your competencies and parallelly, it adds CPs to you. So you can register and you can enhance your knowledge. So it will, uh, they will produce latest uh, uh, valuable and useful webinars to you. So these are one of the, one of the uh, uh, advantages you can get. And you have free courses, and uh, you can enroll it to them. You can pass the. Uh, there are uh, uh, certain modules included to a, a specific uh, uh, training courses. It's not like tough than you know, CISSP or other uh, certifications. But if you go through and if you pass, then a CP is added to you, uh, your credentials. So there are a couple of ways to claim your CPs 
want to participate club activities, chapter activities, uh, want to, uh, if you provide your uh, professional engagement in your workplace, that is a way to earn a CPE. And that is a way to say, hey, I'm in, 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 the, in the correct track and participate in webinars, right? Participate in training courses. So a lot of information, like I said, it's, it's just like a, a university that you have ample of resources to refer. So you don't need to basically jump into different sites. You have all the materials which required to maintain your skills and knowledge uh, in ISC squad. Uh, website so since you all have family with the chapter formation now uh, chapters have been formulated more than 50 countries and 150 plus chapters are there so uh, sujit christi will brief out uh, the other uh, very important aspect of the uh, presentation is the scholarship i understand that this doesn't need any prerequisite this doesn't need you to pass any certification so uh, I'll invite Sujit to brief about the scholarships and I'll invite all of you IEEE members to be part of either one of these scholarships, right? It is meant for you. So Sujit, can you share uh, yes. your, your thoughts on this uh, offering? Yeah. Sure, sure, Nahmad. So, uh, so the IC squared offers scholarship and uh, Nawal on the screen. Now, can you keep that screen for me? Please? Yeah, thank you. Right. So, so there are uh, five scholarships which Namal has listed. There are specific scholarships for women. There are scholarships which are general for both women and men, right? For undergraduates as well as for uh, the masters. So the only criteria which you are, we, they may look for is that you are actually having a security subject, cybersecurity subject. And if you do have, you can apply for the scholarship. Let me also tell you, I mean, I've been an uh, evaluator for these scholarships for the last almost uh, 10 plus years now. I'm yet to see, see a Sri Lankan applicant who has applied for these scholarships. So I would invite all of you to pursue this. Uh, the, the dates are almost uh, end of February. So you have almost 50 plus days where you can you know, get all the necessary information and submit your application. If you do need any help uh, as to how to fill in the form, how to prepare your CV, if you need any guidelines, we'd be more than happy to help you, right? We can always do a session to give you that insight in terms of what you should be doing and how you should be doing uh, to apply for this scholarship. So I would ask uh, Damika and uh, Chamika to take note of this. So if your membership is in need of guidance, we'd be more than happy to provide you that insight. Uh, I would also take this uh, moment to answer one of the questions which have uh, been posted to the chat. Uh, this is about the career options and the person is asking about penetration testing, right? So, so one of the most popular professions in Sri Lanka is everybody talks about becoming a penetration tester or an ethical hacker. So for me and Namal and for most IC Square credential holders, the information security field is very vast. So, so look, at, look at the medical profession. You have general practitioners, you have specialists, you have gynecologists, you have heart specialists, you have dental surgeons. So you can specialize in one specific field. So for us, when we look at it, penetration tester is a domain expert who specializes in one tiny little area in that whole cybersecurity space. So within that, you have uh, red teamers, blue teamers, purple teamers. You have different types of uh, roles you can actually pursue. So if, you were, if you're asking me, what is that you should do to be an expert in uh, becoming a penetration tester? I would say you need to be good uh, in terms of understanding how codes are being developed. So C CSSLP is an option you should be considering where it gives you, uh, let's say let's say 100 people are standing in a queue for a job interview, you have CSSLP, you will given a 
uh, and you know a priority to face the interview and get the job. So which means you understand how to secure the code. You will also be able to use in OWASP and various other uh, material which is available for you to pen test the application. But if you're more into network level penetration testing, then I would suggest that you consider uh, C, uh, SSCP as a certification where it gives you the knowledge in terms of how networking and communication works, and then use that knowledge to build your penetration testing skills, right? So, so always remember that cybersecurity is a vast space. Today, we are not even talking about, uh, you know, the securing the satellites. We are not talking about the cyber warfare. So even as a country, as Sri Lankans, we, we need professionals to protect our own industries, our own cyberspace. The, the world also requires more than a million cybersecurity professionals. And let me also tell you, like if you do have an IC squared uh, credential, if you're planning to migrate, that will also give you an advantage in terms of your visa processing. Right? So you may get extra points in certain countries and in certain countries, these certifications are recognized as priority skills. So which means they will fast track your application. If you do have a CISSP certification, the United Kingdom, the government in the United Kingdom, they recognize the CISSP equivalent to a master's degree. It's not the other way around. If you do, if you have a master's degree in information security is not equal to CISSP. But if you have a CISSP, it is recognized as equivalent to a master's degree in the United Kingdom, right? So, so you want to fast track, you want to grow fast, you want to be recognized, you want to be you know, earning a lots of money, IC squared credentials can give you that opportunity, right? You can achieve that by studying very well, gain the knowledge, gain the expertise. Namal mentioned, right? Today, when people come and you give them a task, they are not able to fulfill that task because they are not able to understand what it takes to fulfill that task. But these credentials will help you to achieve. It will help you to understand the organization requirements. So you're able to perform and deliver the requirements of the organizations. That's why these credentials are top-notch, most wanted certifications globally. Let me also give you a brief uh, insight into terms of the salary skills. Recently, we had one of our members who passed the CISSP first week of November. Two weeks down the line, a large telecom company, a globally recognized telecom company, offered him a job in the Middle East, right? So he, he's looking at a package like 20 to 25,000 UAE dirhams per month. So depending on the market, depending on the countries which you plan to migrate or work, you're looking at salary scales at that level. Even Sri Lanka, some of the companies are willing to pay a very high salary if you have the right skills, right attitude, and the right certifications. You can go places. Now, over to you. We are, right. we are over time. So yes, we need yes. To now we are about to finish. Now, uh, I think, uh, uh, right. So I think uh, you, you learn about what IAC uh, SQUI is about. So, what their certifications are, how, uh, what is the re recognition for their certifications? So what, how, what is the global demand uh, for these certifications? So what are the member benefits you have? So you learn a lot of, uh, throughout of this uh, uh, one hour session, uh, you learn a lot of information why you need to be a credential holder of uh, IAC squared. So think about you, you you uh, know everything that now you want to be a member. So think about where do you want to go tomorrow? So whether you want to be a part of this allied group or whether you want to pursue it as uh, in traditional 
path. So decide whether you want to change your career and start the next giant leap of your career. So if so, we invite all the interested parties to join hands with Colombo chapter to become a member in the local chapter and pursue your certification uh, towards become a elite member of the certification holders community. So with that, we will open the session for Q&A if you have. Nipuna uh, Chamika, over to you. Uh, so thank you so much, Mr. Naman. So I'm sure our audience had some idea about the ICS Square Information Security Coil uh, certifications. So now it's time for the Q&A session. So before I leave the chat, uh, I have a question myself. So as Mr. Naman said, uh, you know, standards change every year, and you know, security issues become you know more complicated, becomes more challenging. So if we get one of these certifications. Do we have to renew it later on down the line? Well, uh, it's like this uh, uh, Chamika and Nupun. So you don't need to retake the exam, right? Certification. But you need to make sure that you achieve the defined set of CPEs uh, in, a, in, a, in a three year cycle. That is the uh, requirement, isn't it, uh, uh, Sujit? Absolutely, absolutely. So you need to keep uh, attending various training programs, paid or free, to keep your skill levels, your knowledge about the industry uh, changes. But if you don't fulfill that 120 hours, which Namal is talking about, then IC squared will strike you off the register, will force you to redo the exams. So in my mind, if you ask me to go back and redo the exam, I probably will not. <laughs> I will not. Yes. Right? So this exam is not about just the knowledge. It's all about your mental agility and your ability to manage your time. It's about real time. They give you a problem and they say, okay, what would you do in this situation? How would you handle this? So it will be scenario based. It's more practical. So you will use your knowledge which you read in the textbook to apply to a real life situation. So the testing is more real. And that's why most industries, most organizations prefer these certifications because the people with these skills, they will apply that knowledge to real life situations. So the time the organization will need to upskill the people will be very, very little. So most of the time when I hire people, if they have that skill, they are like, you know, straight into the game. They won. They don't need to go for practices and train. Straight away, you get them say, okay, go one down and start batting. They can bat long innings. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for the answer. Uh, so now we have some questions in the chat. So one person, uh, Mr. Puttika asks, uh, before becoming a member, how to join Sri Lankan chapter study group for exam preparation? So I, I shared a link so you can become a member. But here is what I would like to offer. If y'all can have a focus group, when I say the, the computer, uh, the, the IEEE chapter, if y'all can have a focus group, we can actually nominate volunteers to come and mentor you. But you're more than welcome to be members in our chapter. Right? You can, right? And we are trying to give the membership free for students. Sujit, uh, interrupting you, uh, yeah. uh, we don't have any prerequisites to join Colombo chapter. Oh, there is no, no, no prerequisites at all, as long as uh, you adhere to the code of ethics. That's all. So uh, we have another question. Uh, what uh, what see uh, what certificates would you recommend for DevOps professionals? DevOps, I would suggest uh, CSSLP. Right, and right. Then, that's yeah. a starting point, right? So, so that's a quick win. You can because you would have studied software development, and what is DevOps? You are developing, and you are also integrating operations real time. Traditionally, what we would do is we would develop, 
take a downtime, do the changes, do the upgrade, and then go live again. Now in DevOps, you do the development and operations simultaneously. DevSecOps is an extension where you build security framework into your DevOps. So you do the vulnerability assessment, the penetration testing, the code reviews, integration testing, all of them is integrated into your development lifecycle. So your knowledge, best practices of security, your knowledge of software development, combined together, you are there at the top. Right, uh, so we have another question. Uh, can undergraduates do these certifications? Yes, SSCP, CSSLP, you do not need work experience to do the exam, right? So if you, if you pass the exam and then you go for an interview, you're demonstrating to them that you have the best knowledge in terms of security. So day one, when you start the job, you're going to count your experience. So one year down the line, you can get yourself certified, which means you will be a full-fledged member. Otherwise, you'll be an associate member. All right, uh, thank you for the answer. Uh, and then you have, uh, what is the best certificate for an ethical hacker? Is it uh, CEH or CISSP? Right, CISSP is very, very broad-based, so it will give you a broad knowledge. But CEH is more of a technical subject, which is very, very specific, narrowed down to specifics. But CEH is a good, good qualification if you want to be an ethical hacker, but if you really want to be a top notch, you should be looking at the SANS uh, offering. SANS offers a much in-depth, broader certification for red teaming, blue teaming, and purple teaming. So it depends what kind of money you can put on the table to acquire these certifications. But CEH is more narrowed down. It's a specific dom domain expertise you bring to the table. But whereas the CISSPs have a, like what Namal mentioned in his own words, it's a mile long. Right, so, so you would have a rounded experience in terms of, as he's saying, right? How right, do, no, I think, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Uh, no, you can self-interrupt. Yeah, no, no, no worries. I mean, I, I saw this question, how long do I study for SSCP? Yeah. Right, if, if you are, right, Tarinu, if you are studying for, if, if let's say you have networking and communication as a subject, as part of your degree, maybe 50 to 60% of it is already covered part of your degree program. So what you may have to study is malware related subjects. You may want to study about business continuity, disaster recovery. So there could be certain subjects which are not covered as part of your degree program. So in that context, I would say anything between three to six months is a good time even to do the full, full uh, course of SACP. So in six months, you should be ready to do the exam with our help and guidance to face the exam. Right. So uh, I think uh, that's all the time we have for this Q&A session. Uh, if you guys have any more questions, you can kind of- I think there was one question on CAP. I, I wouldn't recommend a CAP for any of you. That's mostly for people who are going to be working for a defense organization in the United States. Right? It's called the authorization. So people need to understand risk management and cap. But for, for, for you as Sri Lankans and this part of the world, I would uh, suggest you look at uh, SSCP. If you're going to be more of a networking professional, SSCP is the best way. If you're going to be a software person, CSSLP, but if you're going to be, you know, talking about the next generation of technologies, I'm talking about cloud, then you talk about the cloud certification. And finally, if you really want to, you know, get to the top of the ladder, be a CISO or, you know, a director in cybersecurity, then pursue certifications like CISSP. But your ultimate goal should be CISSP. That's where you see the, the best. 
All right. So uh, thank you so much for the questions. Uh, if you have any questions, you can reach out to Mr. Namwal or Mr. Sujit Christie. We'll be providing their presence, their you know their social media links uh, later on. So yeah. So that's about so that wraps up the Q and A session. So now we will actually request all the participants who are comfortable enough to switch on their video cameras for a group photograph. That'll be nice. So, so while people switch on the cameras, I mean, I'll just clarify C-Risk. C-Risk is more specialization in terms of risk management. But CAP is more in terms of authorization and risk management. So the focus will be slightly different for both, but the common platform will be risk management. Right. Guys, thank you so much for taking time for being with us. And I also want to thank Namal. And uh, of course, I don't want to forget Damika, Chamika, and the team for giving us this opportunity. I, I apologize for being over time by about half an hour. I, I'm sure the time we spent in excess is useful. It has given, probably it has given you an opportunity, another avenue to pursue. Right, which probably you never thought you would pursue. But I would like you to take cybersecurity as a career option. The stakes are good, lots of opportunity, and the world needs more than 3 million cybersecurity professionals. So there's a lots of opportunity for you. So with that note, I want to thank once again, everyone. And I also wish all of you a wonderful, safe, and happy new year. Over to you, Chanika and Nitin. Thank you so uh, now it's time for us to show our gratitude to our speaker, uh, Mr. Namal, for joining us today. So we would like to present a token of appreciation. Thank you, uh, Nipun and Chamika. So I hope that the session would be fruitful to you. So if anything to clarify, please don't hesitate to contact me or uh, Sudhit Krishni. And again, we invite uh, you all to join hands with Colombo chapter and you will be benefited as what uh, Sujit uh, mentioned. So we invite you to be a part of our team. Also a special mention, you know, goes to Mr. Sujit Christie for giving his valuable insights and also to Mr. Dhammi Kumar Singh for initiating this collaboration. Uh, and then I would also like to thank everyone else all our participants who joined us here and tagged along for the ride. So I hope to see everyone here soon for the next episode of CS Talks. Goodbye for now and stay safe. Thank you. Thank you.